Hello everyone, welcome back to Eve Rumor. Now that my e-bike build is pretty much complete for the moment, I thought it would be a good time to go over the electric scooters in my life, which is what actually got me into this whole electric personal mobility vehicle hype. The year was 2016 and the new Xiaomi M365 electric scooter is all the rage in the western realm, but in my eyes it is still a bit too expensive, being such a novelty product and for something I have no idea if I'm going to like. So I find this good looking unit on a UK website and order it at less than half the price. This is the JD Bug Fun Series electric scooter. It has a 250 watt motor with a chain drive to the rear wheel, originally powered by a 24 volt lead acid battery setup and capable of the blisteringly fast speed of 13 kilometers an hour with me on it. So basically humiliatingly slow, humiliatingly loud and humiliatingly short of range unless we are talking literally going to the shop around the corner. In its factory state, it would be completely useless in a big city for anything more than a walk in the park with the kids. And guess what? To add salt to injury, it even has a button to further limit the speed to 6 km an hour. You know, because it wasn't humiliatingly slow already. Thing is, at the time, this was such a novelty around here that people did look at me as if I were an alien. Or at least I choose to believe that and not that it was just the sight of a seemingly grown man on a child's toy moving along at barely over walking speed on something electric just because he's too lazy to put his foot down and push like real men do. Though keep in mind that pushing on one of these is pretty much impractical and hardly possible for more than a few meters unless you see it as a way to do your cardio workout for the day. And yes, before this one, at least personally, I had not seen anybody on one around these here parts. But you have to admit, the JD Bug is a looker and that is what drew me to it in addition to the cheap price, it has some semblance of a proper design and even though the plastics that cover the iron skeleton beneath are a pain to remove and put back on, they do make it look so good and so refined and given what has been released since then, a job well done for JD Bug so early on. As you can imagine, it didn't take too long before I took it apart and replaced those heavy and pathetic lead acid batteries with a 16 amp hour 6S LiPo battery, essentially tripling the original capacity while reducing the weight of the scooter considerably. That sadly did not yield any notable increase in speed given that the voltage range was roughly the same, but range did improve a good deal from just under 5 kilometers to a bit over over 15 kilometers, which made it a good deal more useful, but ever so slow and loud. That chain rattled a lot. For the most part, it seemed a lot more suited to kids despite the size and weight of it, and they did have a great deal of fun on it, especially with it being something new and unseen before now. I did, however, recover from the humiliation by managing to ride it with one hand and to control my drone with the other to film myself going around the airstrip at the same time. I owned it. Masculinity restored. However, it quickly became apparent that this thing is not going to cut it when it came to my traveling needs around the city, so a few months later when the price of the Xiaomi scooter had dropped a decent amount, I did finally order one and so the next chapter in my journey began. The Xiaomi looked nothing like the JD Bug. No plastics on it, a minimalistic design, aluminum only body, it was noticeably lighter at 12.5 kilograms compared to around 18 for the humiliating one. Completely silent, had a disc brake, a proper 36 volt lithium ion battery capable of a 20 km range with a 90 kg rider on it at speeds of up to 25 km an hour. Keep in mind that this was back in 2017 and the software hacks available today for this model did not yet exist. Neither did all the hardware upgrades to make it more comfortable. It was, however, a huge step up from the JD Bug and was actually a useful tool to get around town on. 
the newly sprouting bike lanes were proving useful too. However, since a big part of this city's streets and sidewalks feel like riding over a riverbed and a Xiaomi 2 has absolutely no suspension, I quickly realized this wasn't going to cut it either. Also, even that 20 km range often wasn't enough and the charging was way too slow to be of any practical use on the go. Even so, I did just over 600 km on it, doing my best to avoid paved streets, ruined streets, which pretty much excluded half of the city, sidewalks, and so on and so on. Because otherwise, going on such made me feel sorry both for the scooter, as it felt like it will fall apart at any moment, and for me, because that felt rough and uncomfortable. Lucky for me, during the time I used it, I had no issues with the rear mud guard breaking off, the battery breaking, or the locking mechanism breaking. Only thing I really did was to put a 3D printed part inside the stem to remove the looseness in the folding mechanism. I did get a flat at some point, and let me tell you, replacing that tire with a new, stiffer and stronger one was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, and I wasn't even able to do it with the tools I had available, so after a lot of struggle I took it to the tire shop where they seated it properly in no time. So, after rattling my teeth loose around these streets with a Xiaomi scooter, which would be a lot better suited in a country like Germany or the Netherlands, where the terrain is relatively flat and the streets are smooth, I started looking for an upgrade. Soon after, the deed was done and a new electric kick scooter found its way to me, and it was the Monster. Yes, yes, I know that by today's standards this isn't anything impressive, but I got this in fall 2017 and back then pretty much the only performance kick scooters were Weped and the Dualtrons, both of which cost an arm and a leg, and there weren't that many of them around. Plus, the Xiaomi was just barely picking up popularity around here, so this thing really did look and go like a monster compared to it. Also, since the manufacturer didn't really have a designation for it, we agreed to call it that for obvious reasons at the time. It cost about 70% more than the Xiaomi M365 at the time and featured a 52 volt system, dual 1000 watt motors, full suspension, a 26 amp hour battery, disc brakes all around, LED lights all around, larger tires, top speed of around 55 km an hour and a range of around 50 km an hour with me on it. And it pulled like a beast, so that price was well worth it. The range was finally enough even on the most demanding of days. I no longer had to help it to get moving to preserve battery and speed was more than adequate and I rarely went more than 35 km an hour and it could go uphill all day without breaking a sweat or needing any help. And then there was the suspension. Oh my dear, what a difference compared to the two before it. The ride was smooth and comfortable, it was outstanding. Only thing you had to get used to on it is the loose feeling compared to the Xiaomi and the JD Bug. Because of that suspension, it literally floated around and felt quite loose, fluid not as stiff as the other two, so it did take some getting used to, but after that, it was just brilliant. I felt like I was riding on a cushion. All of that, however, did come at a price. A price paid in weight. The monster stood at a healthy 34 kilograms, which was almost three times the weight of the Xiaomi and double the weight of the JD Bug, but I didn't care. I took it up and down the stairs to the third floor a few times a day and I was happy. And then, about a thousand kilometers later, some issues appeared. First was the steering stem, which actually broke off during my ride, but funny enough, I was so used to the scooter by then, that even so I was able to ride it safely back home. The material just tore off. A friend of mine was able to come up with a solution and repair it by replacing it with another stem tube, but sadly the top part of the handlebar could no longer retract into the base of the stem, which wasn't too big of an issue. It could still fold at the base and I could still fold the handles. The bigger issue was the rear mudguard, which rusted through and just snapped 
off at some point because of all the vibrations at the back, which meant that all dirt, water and other stuff from the street was going to get thrown at me now and this was not ideal because I do ride all year round, including winter. That same friend fashioned up a new rear mudguard, which pretty much broke the same way not long after, but since it was past winter now, I removed it, tried to 3D print a replacement, which only lasted about 2 kilometers before breaking, so from there on I went without a mudguard. Then the battery started losing range, so I decided to open it up and see what the deal is and in the process found out that the frame of the scooter does have its issues too because the steering stem had started to buckle the bucket where it is mounted to it and there were even cracks in the material and this was not going to be as easy to fix. In addition, there was some new slop in the rear suspension because it doesn't have bushings or bearings, but it directly mounted to the iron of the bucket, so it was working its way through it, enlarging the mounting holes, and that was yet another issue. Once I opened up the battery pack, two more issues presented themselves. First, the battery pack was actually only 9p, not 10p, like they claimed on the label, so in effect it was more like 23 amp hours rather than 26 amp hours. And in addition, the BMS had failed to keep the cells in check, hence one of the cells was way out of balance, which was causing the shorter range. I removed the BMS and balanced all cells to perfection, then made a new balance cable and made it long enough so it can reach outside of the base, so I can plug in my external equalizer during charging if needed, which can balance at up to 1 amp, Plus, I will no longer be suffering from that BMS just cutting off the battery too early. I've had to push this thing a few times and it is not fun. So, I did ride it for a while longer, have around 2000 kilometers on it and I am generally quite happy with it, but quite a lot of things came together that really put me off this type of transport. All these issues with the frame of the scooter, which would have required a good deal of effort and time to fix or to replace the frame entirely, which would not have been cheap or easy, plus by this time the Xiaomi scooter had become quite popular, as well as some other models from newcomers to the market and people had already started drawing too much attention to these vehicles by causing all sorts of problems, bumping into people on sidewalks and all kinds of other bullshit yet and there were talks of limitations, regulations and who knows what else, so soon after I decided to move on from electric kick scooters and into something a bit more serious and well defined, the next logical step up, at least in my mind, electric scooters. Yes, I got me one of those City Coco models which are also sometimes called electric Harley scooters for obvious reasons I suppose, and I'm happy to say that I never looked back. My brother is still using the Xiaomi one, but the JD bug and the monster are just gathering dust under a table in my garage, waiting for the day when I will decide what to do with them. I do have some plans brewing for the monster, or more accurately for its parts, but that is yet to mature so might be a while. As for the Harley scooter, that is what I will be dealing with in the next few videos, so make sure you subscribe and stick around if you're interested to learn about that one. I hope you liked this video and maybe found it useful, if that is so, like like, share and comment, this helps the channel grow. Ride safe and I will see you in the next one.